we've heard from Singapore's Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan, who says that ASEAN can help facilitate a return to normalcy and stability. Do you share that belief? Yeah, of course, you know, so as you know, it's in ASEAN, you know, we, we are the family members. So, so when we have any uh, one member state have that difficulty, so definitely the all other member states, other family members want to help to solve the problem, especially in a, in a peaceful and in an amicable manner. That is, you know, no doubt that um, all the member states have this kind of uh, 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 attitude towards uh, an, a, 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 a member state of the ASEAN. So, I agree with, 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 with him, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Singaporean foreign minister, but at the same time, there are the limitations, of course, the, the way the ASEAN work, uh, so it's a bit uh, different from one to another because in the in ASEAN, whatever we do, we do with the consensus. So that, sometimes that consensus makes things slightly difficult, make things uh, 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 get the, some constraint. So, we do understand, uh, but at the same time, again, you know, like uh, what I mentioned earlier, time is really essence for, 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 for people of Myanmar, especially uh, civilian, uh, innocent civilian. So we need to protect them. We need to get the, you know, the, 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 the constructive action that protect the people of Myanmar. So that is what we are longing for. That is what we are expecting for from the international community, including our ASEAN family members. Is ASEAN and other members of the international community moving fast enough to stem the bloodshed first of all and then move towards uh, a diplomatic resolution to this crisis? Um, if, if the, you know, uh, if the members, member state, I mean the international community, if move forward, I don't think we would lose this um, uh, this number of people, you know, like look at it, 60, 80 people already dying. So it is a, a, a huge bit number for, for, for us, especially again, this is those who die are the, uh, the young people, that even though some are teenagers. So it's a quite uh, heartbroken for, for, for us. It's really, you know, touching for all of us. So we, that is why, you know, we need quick and the, you know, strong measures from the international community. Whatever that, the way that they can, you know, some maybe, you know, uh, 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 support indirectly, some maybe uh, be, uh, be supporting directly to the people of Myanmar. So that sort of thing that we really need from the international community. Member states that supporting to the people of Myanmar from the member state may differ from one to another. But the things that I like to, you know, uh, the request that all the member states, it's whatever way that they can, whatever strongest possible uh, uh, action that they can take, please do so. That is my request. That is my appeal to the international community. And do you support ASEAN members engaging directly with the military to try and facilitate dialogue? So the thing is that one uh, engaging, because we, we, in, uh, you, you may record it this, uh, in the my statement, I repeat that do not recognize the military regimes. Uh, so, and then whatever things that we like to have that dialogue, the first thing, the release of the, you know, our leader, the Aung San Suu Kyi, and the pre uh, President Wu Wim Yen, and uh, uh, all the leaders, and uh, all the unlawful detainees must do first. The release of, the, of them is really important for all of us. Otherwise, we will not get the you know, meaningful dialogue. That is my, 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 my personal point of view. And the US has recently announced fresh sanctions on Myanmar's military leaders. How effective will they be, do you think? Yeah, so the targeted sanctions are effect, uh, eff effective, but at the same time, uh, how effective and how strong, how, how quick, that is also, you know, the question mark. Because we always st uh, stress that Whenever we have the uh, the the sanctions on on, on targeted sanction or uh, sanction, we don't want any spillover effect on the people uh, people of Myanmar. So that is what I like to request. So make it very minimum spillover effect on the people of Myanmar. So the the targeted sanctions somehow you know it's a be have the uh, have the impact 
on, on the military regime. You look at, you know, the, 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 their parents, or for example, the, 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 the Ume Haolan uh, children uh, uh, in the list of target ascension, the mother spoke out that, you know, this, they are the children, they're not, you know, uh, uh, they, sh sh they shouldn't be in the list, uh, that sort of thing that it shows that it it's, it's has the impact. On, 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 on the military regime. So we welcome the target extension, but at the same time, we like to, uh, uh, we like, uh, we like to make the, you know, uh, remind that, uh, you know, please make the minimum spillover effect on the, uh, on the people of Myanmar. That is, that is the point. It's very important for, for the country. And in your view, is the Biden administration doing enough to help civilians in Myanmar, both when it comes to targeted sanctions as well as the possibility of the US using its substantial clout on the international stage to try and pressure actors around the world to do what they can to try and squeeze the military in the country. Yeah, it's, uh, it's I repeat again, you know, the stronger possible action. So we still need stronger action from the all member states, especially, you know, those countries can uh, influence and the, 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 uh, uh, the countries in the region, also uh, the military regime. So we still need the stronger action from the United States. And Mr. Ambassador, just to get a sense of the dynamics at play behind, this, behind the scenes in, in Myanmar before the uh, events at the start of the year and the, and the coup, obviously last November we saw at the United Nations um, that there was a meeting the situation on human rights which you described as politically motivated ignoring the complexities uh, around the issue has your position changed and was there a degree of military pressure um, that forced you to create those kind of statements that kind of rhetoric because of course there's been plenty of criticism from the West aimed at the likes of Aung San Suu Kyi at the NLD for not doing enough to protect the Rohingya in Myanmar. Yeah, th thank you so much. You know, this, this, this issue in Yakai State is very delicate, very complex. So that is why, you know, whenever we, 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 we take action against or whatever uh, 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 measures we take against this issue in the Yakai State, we have to be, uh, uh, we have to be dealing the issue with very careful manner. So in, in, the, in the, the government of Myanmar, we, 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 we were dealing with the issue with very careful and a very delicate ma uh, ma manner. So you look at it, you know, the, the, the issue, uh, when the, the state councillor, Dong San Suu Kyi, led government uh, came in, we know that this is the important issue that, we, that the, the government need to address. Uh, so so right after uh, the, she uh, came into the office, she, she found the number of committees and then she found the, uh, 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 the ad advisory commission led by uh, Dr. Kofi Annan. So that's the way the government pay attention to the is issue because we want to find the sustainable solution on the, this issue. So we, we, we agree that there's atrocity took place in, in Yakai State in 2016 and 2017. The report of the ICOE is clearly state that the atrocity uh, took place in, in, in Yakai in 2017 and 2016. So based on that report, the government is you know, eager uh, to, to take action who, whoever committed this kind of, uh, of, of, of atrocity, this kind of human rights violation. So that is where we are, but at the same time, uh, we have, we, 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 we uh, the government, you know, when we are dealing with this issue, government uh, was working on the thin line. So one is the, uh, the perception from the international community, one is the perception from the elements inside the country. So because the main purpose is we like to uh, keep the country in a peaceful and stable, uh, uh, a s a stable situation. But... It's, it's time out differently in the look at the first of February because of the military coup. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, the, the special envoy, Ms. Christine Buckner, always, you know, pointed out the government is dealing with the issue very uh, de delicately and in the, in the complex ma manner. Uh, so at the time, so the coup might happen 
at any time. So, so then it it happened. So because that is why in the my statement my statement in the in the November at the uh, general general assembly. So I rightly pointed out that you know the, so we need to look at the issue from the broader perspective. perspective. So we always try to don't look at the issue from the one single uh, uh, dimension. Need to look at the the issue from the multiple dimension. That is what you know the the previous um, the the government and the DLEC government always stress uh, when dealing with this issue. And obviously, it's it's an issue that's front uh, front and focus in the minds of so many people looking at the situation on Myanmar over recent years around the world. There are calls at the moment, of course, as you pointed out, for international action when it comes to the takeover of the, of the military. If there were to be a, a decoupling of the military and the democratically appointed government, would we and the international community, our audiences listening, expect to see a different position when it comes to uh, the Rohingya going, going forward if we reach that uh, eventuality of a back to the stages and the, the steps towards democracy and that decoupling of the, the military and the government? So, you know, this, what happened in, in this uh, 1st of February and, you know, what happened, you know, throughout this, uh, this February and until now. So what we see is that it's a be, you know, uh, it's good for lessons and good for all of us. So we, we realize that how uh, brutal that military is and the, how the, uh, the, 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 the atrocity that they committed, then it's, we see on our own eyes. So it's where we, you know, we, we, it from, because of this uh, 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 experience we went through, when we, we look at the issue in the Yakin State, uh, to me, it's where we, you know, in the future, it's where we easy for the government to handle the issue because definitely there is already you know the sentiment already you know the 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 uh, the, pers uh, the people desire from the people is that the military should not be in this position military should go back to the barrack and military should be a professional one not like this one they should not be in the politics they should not be in economy they should be a professional one that is definitely all or us are in mind and finally, what efforts are, are underway to try and, obviously we're in the midst of a, a global pandemic, humanitarian crises around the world amplified by it. What efforts are underway to try and make sure vaccines are coming to Myanmar, to try and make sure that aid agencies are being able to, to work in the country in the midst of trying to engage um, a diplomatic solution to this, this crisis that began uh, at the start of February. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. It's very sad, you know, it's uh, the NAD led government, they already prepare for, you know, a uh, 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 vaccination and to the, you know, to, to the people. Uh, because, you know, we are, we are not a rich country. We, we, we are ALDC. Uh, with that kind of, you know, the constraint, we cut kind of limitation in our resources. The NLDA-led government, they did, the, they did the best uh, 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 within their you know, uh, 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 capacity to bring the vaccination. You compare to other countries, we can say that Myanmar is sort of you know fast country bring the vaccination to the people, especially uh, those in the front lines. So that's sort of you know, that uh, the uh, NLDA-led government was doing. But unfortunately, what happened on 1st of February, look at the people came out on the street. Nobody cared about, you know, the uh, COVID. Because now that we are facing is the, you know, the military coup. That, that military coup should end immediately. That, this is the desire of the people. Because of that desire, the, the COVID has become... A, 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 a behind the, you know, uh, what we are facing uh, this situation. Of course, we all concerned uh, with the, you know, the, 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 the pandemic. But now, this military coup is uh, much more than pandemic. So we need to pay attention more on the, you know, end of the military coup. Of course, 
we, there will be the implication uh, with regard to the, the COVID that we need to face it, you know, uh, 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 whether you like it or not. We have to face it. We have to overcome can we, with, uh, with regard to COVID. Um, Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate you talking to us. Thank you so much for, for having me uh, here. And uh, I, uh, uh, this opportunity is quite, uh, uh, quite important for me because I like to, you know, I had the chance to convey the voices of the people of Myanmar through uh, the Channel News Asia because it's a, a Channel News Asia is one of the popular one of the you know, leading uh, 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 news uh, agency uh, in, in, in the world, especially in the, in the region. So with that, I'd like to end by saying the military coup must fail. The democracy must prevail. Our fight must win. Thank you.